Okay, we're going to edit the sound. I've just chosen a basic synth sound. Polysynth 2. And I'm going to press the tone editor button right here. First page of 7, you can see right here. We navigate through the pages by using the direction keys here. Left and right will take us through the pages. Sometimes you can go up and down as well. Anyway, back to the main screen. Let's increase our attack time. Zero just means instant attack. Your sound appears straight away. A high attack time means it'll fade in a little bit more gently. And let's go down to release time, which is at the other end of the sound. So the higher your release time, the longer it will take the sound to fade away. Quite nice. Let's move on to page two. And our cutoff which will increase the brightness of the sound. If we take that right back to into the minuses. So let's bring that up quite high. Okay, now for vibrato type, this is pretty fun. We can select the waveform that our vibrato is going to take. Is it going to be a nice hard square shape or a really soft triangular sort of shape or a smooth sine wave? Let's take it to extremes and use the square wave, which of course is a very unforgiving type of vibrato, very strong. Here's the vibrato depth. So yes, that's pretty extreme. Let's change it to a sine wave vibrato, which should be much smoother. And we can change the rate of that. Nice fast rate can be a really intense sound. See that rubbing sort of synth noise. And let's change the depth of that, make it really intense, about 45. I would show you that with the pitch bend wheel too, but I don't have a free hand right now. I'm holding the camera, but anyway, you get the idea. And I'll slow down that rate again. And we can also program the amount of delay is taken before that vibrato kicks in. So if we have a nice long delay, then you hear the vibrato kicking in after that one or two seconds that I held down the key. Which can be really effective too. Octave shift is just what it says it is. If I make it low, then I'm playing low, and so that was the exact same key. Okay, let's leave that on zero. And what's on page five? Overall volume, the touch sensitivity, and the reverb send, chorus send. So if reverb is important to you with this particular pad, and it is quite a quite a smooth pad, so we might want to max out the uh, reverb. Now the DSP. We're going to apply that DSP, which is our multi-effect system. Now delay won't have much effect on a soft, breathy sort of noise like this, so let's try something like phaser. And now you can see we're on page 7 of 11. We have more pages now because we've selected that phaser. So here we can change the resonance of the phaser. This is That was set to a pretty resonant sort of level. It's slightly more subtle there, but still pretty strong. Um, LFO rate, and LFO depth. So again, we're controlling the cycles that the sound goes through. So you can hear that sort of choppy phaser sound. Increasing in speed in the background there. Let's slow that down a bit. And that's the depth of that LFO. So again, fairly extreme. And being a phaser, it can go through several cycles of waveform as well. So we can have a nice smooth sine waveform, triangular, or just random. Random is a lot of fun. This is again routed back to the reverb. So this is the amount of DSP that's going to be sent through the reverb. Let's max that out. So 
So okay, that's not the most outstanding sound, obviously, that you're ever going to hear. I won't worry about saving that. So having not saved it, it returns us back to the default way that sound is presented when you select it. But yeah, even though it's not the most amazing sound in the world, you've got something like 600 sounds to choose from. And if you imagine all the possibilities with your 200 effects banks that you can program, plus those tone editor functions there, as well as layering up to two sounds at once, you have a pretty good range of sounds at your disposal there. 